When we think about the Armenian genocide, we think about the loss of land, loss of people, brutality, uh, and we don't think deeper into the causes of it and the uh, real impact. Um, and it's just by saying Armenian genocide, I think we're not getting anywhere it's with it. We're just lumping a, a, a lot of stuff into that one phrase, and then we're giving it a meaning. And as I've been working on this, you know, on my father's papers, and making a point of reading, not too much reading because I'm a very slow reader, uh, but going to lectures and putting pieces together. There's so many different aspects of this genocide. And I don't think we yet have a grasp, a real grasp, on what we mean by when we say that. And uh, it's, and there's probably many reasons that we're not getting ahead with what we're, uh, with that situation. Uh, I see it as, um, just let it be. Uh, I see it as um, uh, it's taking a lot of our concerns. We feel uh, unable to go forward with it, to get something that we're looking, wanting to happen. We're not sure what we want to happen, but something has to happen. We know that. How is this thing going to be solved? What is it that's going to be solved? And it comes in various pieces, and one thing that is really bothering me now for the last, I don't know how many years, is the realization of America's impact on not letting our story portrayed in the media. And it's a simple reason Turkey means so much to us. Turkey is going to complain. Well, let's see what Turkey's going to do. No more than what ISIS is doing. We're not afraid of ISIS. Why are we afraid of Turkey? So, we don't confront that. Do something with that. And I think that making these films, making... Uh, having our conferences at the universities, we're trying to educate the non-Armenian, the, the person that doesn't know. We're trying to get people to align with us. And we haven't figured out how to break through this impact. I call it a clog. America is a clog in preventing Armenians to get what they want. And we're not working on that. It's, if it's not just uh, America, it's England and uh, a few other countries. But the others will go along with us. And probably... Others realize what we're saying. America knows what we're saying. They accepted it a uh, hundred years ago. But that's before the Jewish situation came up. 
So this is uh, what I, I don't understand in reading and reaching out to people to see who's going to be that person that will have not only the guts but the exact thing, the wording, uh, the situation to address, to confront the political issue. And we should be able to, especially with the in, uh, with the use of the internet, if we are stifled with the media, we have the internet. And the internet is universal. How quickly, when somebody puts that there's going to be some kind of a, uh, a doing someplace, and on the internet, a thousand people are already rushed over there. That's amazing to me. And yet we're not using that, uh, the means that we have today. And we have enough knowledge. We don't need enough knowledge anymore. We don't need enough uh, documents anymore. We have what we need. But we're not finding the way to break through and to demand our uh, situation in the right places. Do, do you, do you th just, I'm going to ask you this because it's related. So, given your view on, on the role that the United States plays, how important is genocide recognition to you? So I don't know uh, how important it is, really. See, this is the one thing. Is, uh, is America the only one? Uh, America would be the leader if, if the Americans uh, would do it, then you'd get more people tagging along. Okay, let's, let's pause for a second. We have sirens again, Sarah, sorry. I'm going to start with, just like that student that said, let's put a fire. Okay. Are, are, aren't we as smart as a 11-year-old? Okay. okay. And what I mean about this, I haven't seen anybody, you know, Maybe Dink, Harant Dink, had a right vision. And this would have been my father's vision. You don't attack but by befriending. And I find that this is why when I go to these conferences and I befriend the Turks, uh, it's getting them on our side. It's they who are going to be our ally, the good Turk. And I think three-fourths of the Turks were good Turks, along with the Kurds. And uh, they don't know their history, and they, they shouldn't be getting the blame, and they don't want the blame. But if we get to the point of finding this uh, alliance, building up this alliance. And in my reading with a lot of uh, Turkish writers, invariably they refer to Harant Dink, listening to Harant Dink, Harant Dink. Well, he was one person. He had a fantastic idea. And he was killed for that idea. And... You know, is it our fear? Or, you know, there is a fear factor. I don't want to be killed. But somehow we're going to have to, it, it's going to be a, a verbal situation, not a, a, a war. 
That's we don't need that. Do you, do you think that the good church that you're talking about? Do you think that eventually they may convince the Turkish government to recognize the genocide? Oh yeah, they'll recognize the genocide. I I, I think uh, which one? Well, Fatma Muge does, Hunter does. It's that, okay, they recognize it. But, you know, when it comes to land recognition, you know, that's a different story. And what do we mean by land recognition? You know, how many Armenians would go back to Anatolia and start businesses? And sometimes I think, why not? If you're not that successful in Armenia or here in the United States, do a business. Uh, in Anatolia with the Kurds, there are sophisticated Kurds. Now, we visited Kurdish villages mainly that I know of. I don't know which one. Mainly when I asked, they said they're Kurds. Uh, but I, those are Turkish villages. And uh, they have markets. They buy jeans. Uh, they buy things made in the West. You know, I, I, I am curious of Armenians going and doing business in, you know, in Anatolia and in that area, not just in uh, Istanbul. And get your, you know, go back to 1915. Live there. And or have a business there. And uh, over the years, 20 years, 50 years, how many more Armenians will be around there? It's a good place to be. It's very fertile. And we don't think of that. We think of the map, the, the lines on the map. Man put that line, and it keeps changing, and today is obvious. They're talking about, is there going to be another Iraq? Who created the Iraq? The West. Who's going to destroy Iraq? The West. Baghdad will be there. Mosul will be there. But the country of Baghdad, I mean of Iraq, might not be there, and that's sad. Once we created it, now we're going to take it away from them to our uh, uh, situation. Who is the West to have that power? Those days are gone. So things are happening so quickly and so, you know, who would think of ISIS and what we're in today? You know, uh, People are waiting all over the globe. The injustice is all over. And who is ISIS, really? Was it Ottoman Turkey? Yeah, that's spooky. Uh, who were the Turkish people? Not Muslims. You know, aren't all... Turkic. So that, you know, they could be Muslim, but not necessarily, you know, having a, a background of some. I don't know really the background of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, genocide, why it really happened. And uh, so th what I'm thinking of, the world is fastly changing interestingly changing. Uh, you know, when you have a white-blooded American joining up with ISIS, have a, uh, a white-blooded American allying with you. It's safer. We don't do that. And we're not We're not, pol we're not foresighted in that way. It's always like 
Turkey's going to have to uh, acquisit, and we're going to have to sort of get it away from Turkey. Uh, it, you know, I, I think there's another way. In my, in my, for some reason, I think we don't have to. You know, time has changed. Time will be changing with the Internet and all these inventions that we have. Who knows what the world's going to be like? And what do, you, what do you think will happen during the 100th anniversary, three months away, four months away? Oh, you know, it, uh, I was more pessimistic about uh, is it just going to be a fiasco type of a thing. Uh, but I see different in different countries, different cities, doing particular things, mainly on the conference level. We have conferences all over the place. What would you that, like are, that I know conferences, or like uh, here, the you know two things that I know that is happening: uh, displays of one sort of another. Uh, but it's all visual. It's not. Uh, I, well. It's not getting together. I, I don't hear talk of what's going to happen nine, uh, 2016, New Year's Eve. We're all concerned about 2015. When 2016 comes, okay, now back to usual. We've done our duty. Or is the duty just beginning? I mean, what are we doing this year that isn't preparing us for 2016? Uh, this is, you know, in listening to... Uh, I was very pessimistic uh, at the beginning of January because I wasn't hearing much about it. But I'm hearing these conferences and I'm hearing more participation, but is the partition, participation also leading to the unity of Armenians? I mean, is, are, are we going to have this, uh, are, are we finding a way to be united, you know, divided, uh, we fail, we know that, we've suffered that for hundreds of years. That's one thing. Let's learn. We have to respect each other, and this is our biggest, biggest enemy. And this is, in my father's stories, unity is the number one thing. On his, I think I told you on his gravestone he wanted to have. Here, it, here lies a, uh, a uh, wounded a boy, by Armenian un a disunity. This is his bottom line. He wanted that on his tombstone. Uh, do I not respect my dad's last wish, or do I put it on his tombstone? I still haven't decided. I haven't done his tombstone. Is that a crime that I haven't done that? I'm not that religious to think so. I have my shrine over here. I don't need to go to the cemetery to see that written down. And if I don't have it written down, well, I always feel guilty. This is what my dad said on my tombstone. This is what I want written. What is he saying? He's telling the Armenian community, unite. And we still don't get that message. And um, sir, can you repeat what your dad wants? I, I think we had a lot of noise there, so I, just just so I can make sure I have. Yeah, it. he said, okay, "Here lies a wounded Armenian boy." He calls him a boy. Be uh, here lies a. Uh, you, you could start all over. 
Yeah, I'm trying that, to. That he suffered all his life. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Danchavads suffered, right? Danchavads. Mm -hmm. Here lies an Armenian boy who suffered all his life because of Armenian disunity. Didn't suffer because of what the Turks did. He died, look, his father, when he was eight years old, was always saying, his father, if we don't unite, they're going to eat our heads, much before there was an idea of a genocide. So what, was, what did they know before? They always knew this, if we don't unite, they're going to eat our heads. This poor man died with those words in his mouth. You know, and when they took him, you know, my father describes when he came back from, uh, he was jailed for three uh, weeks and he was, you know, brutally beaten. He was bloody on his uh, uh, clothing and he just picks up his sons to uh, drop them off at the Mektab, the Turkish school. And uh, he was ready because one of the sisters told us the story that he returned home and he uh, he just, you know, the Turks had, uh, were picking them up and as a family, he, his second wife, a little kid, and the two girls were on the march to Palu to be killed. This is where they did a lot of killing. And if you go to Palu, all these crevices, it's a perfect place. So I often wondered, why did they march him to Palu? Why didn't they kill him in Petty? Petty didn't have all those crevices. It is really spooky when uh, there was a church high on a mountain and we were climbing up to the mountain you know, to get to the church. It was a very small church. It almost looked like a lookout tower. And... Uh, but it was hard climbing up there. It took time. And I thought, gee, did these guys, you know, how do they uh, suffice for food, you know, going down, up and down? And, uh, but w when you think about it, 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 then you hear stories, and they were a march to Pal Palu. They were a march to Palu. Well, Palu has all these places to dump. Uh, in another village in Chungush, there's also another crevice there. It has a name. It's a, it's a steep hole. And, and that area, that place is known where they would take people to dump. They had their dumping sites. Uh, we don't even have uh, a, a number. How many of these Armenians? We say a million and a half marched out on uh, the Derzor. We have a number there. But what about the number that my father is talking about? That he either heard or saw? So, based on that thought, uh, I wanted to ask, you told me that your father's collection 